Many of the things that you do during a flight, even with good intentions, are making the flight attendant's job more challenging. My name's Megan, and with hundreds of flights under my belt, and a pilot for a sister, and insider experiences at flight training academies worldwide, I've got the scoop on what annoys flight attendants the most. The last one is not only annoying, but it's also illegal. And you've also probably done it. I have. The first thing that passengers do that drive flight attendants crazy would be switching seats before takeoff. Flight attendants need to check where everyone is sitting for safety reasons, and if you sit somewhere other than your assigned seat, you might be in someone else's seat that could still be getting on the plane. If you are desperate for a new seat, it's best to wait until after takeoff when the seatbelt sign has been turned off and you are certain that everyone else is on board. But even then, the flight crew is not going to be too impressed. Boarding time is also a very busy time, and your flight crew will be annoyed if you disregard all the work that they are doing and start making special requests or asking questions. This is not the time to be placing a drink order or to be asking your flight attendant about advice for your tight connection. The easiest way to get on a flight attendant's bad side would be to misuse the overhead bin space. This space is meant for larger carry-on suitcases or carry-on size backpacks that do not fit underneath the seat in front of you. That means that jackets, backpacks, hats, and laptop cases do not belong in the overhead bin. On a similar note, Please do not be that passenger that is arguing with the flight attendant about what you can and what you can't put in the overhead bin. Keep in mind that your plane ticket includes your seat and it does not include any of the storage space above your seat. You can think of the overhead bins as a shared space that are meant only for larger bags. It's not like every passenger has some equal amount of bin space that they can use for whatever they want during the flight. That is not the case. If you are an excellent packer and you are traveling with just a personal item such as a purse or a small backpack and you don't have a larger carry-on, then your item is still going to go underneath the seat in front of you, even if that means you take up zero overhead bin space. Speaking of larger bags in the overhead bin space, asking a flight attendant to lift your heavy suitcase overhead is a big no-no. Heavy lifting requests are so frustrating for flight attendants because oftentimes they are not even allowed to lift passenger luggage since it puts them at risk of an on-the-job injury. They might help you out anyway just to keep things moving along, but they aren't supposed to. So please try lifting your own suitcase first or ask a fellow passenger if you need support instead of asking a crew member. One way to both annoy and disrespect your flight attendant would be to leave your headphones in or carry on having a conversation during their safety demonstration. You might have seen the safety briefing many times, but imagine giving a talk and having everyone ignoring you or speaking over you. That's how flight attendants feel when passengers don't pay attention. Pulling out your headphones and keeping your mouth closed are small gestures that can go a long way in showing respect to your cabin crew. And something that is going to be next level annoying to your flight attendant is if you are that passenger that does not pay attention during the safety briefing and then goes on to break the rules. Do not be the passenger that requires special and direct instructions to put your laptop away, place your personal items under the seat in front of you, stow your tray table, and then fasten your seatbelt for takeoff. I've also sat beside passengers that will just put the seatbelt on top of each other on their lap and pretend it's done up when it's not. Um, I don't understand. First of all, you are not fooling anyone, and then also 80% of accidents are going to happen on takeoff and landing. If your seatbelt is not properly done up, you will be flying through the cabin as opposed to staying in your seat where you should be. I was once on a flight where a pilot announced that there was going to be a delay in takeoff because his system was showing that not all passenger seatbelts were done up, which was brilliant. A chorus of seatbelt clicks echoed through the cabin. Nice move. This would be similar to if you were in a car and the car started beeping at you because not all the passengers had their seatbelts on. Well, there is no system like this that I am aware of on the airplane. If you have ever wondered how long your flight will be delayed or how long the seatbelt sign will be on after takeoff, then you're not alone. But here's a secret. Oftentimes, the flight attendants don't know how long the delay or the seatbelt sign is going to be illuminated for 
either. And asking them is just going to be frustrating and pointless. It's always best to just be patient and wait for an announcement instead of taking up flight attendant time with questions that they usually can't answer. Something that will drive any flight attendant nuts would be poking them or tugging at their sleeve to try to get their attention. This is never appropriate. It's also never appropriate to grab things off of their cart. Use your words. But then be careful which words you decide to use, as flight attendants generally do not want to be called some term of endearment like honey, dear, or sweetie. Although come to think of it, I am often called these things by the flight attendant, especially when we are touching down in southern states. Anyway, always address the flight attendant by their name if they have a tag on, or a neutral excuse me, ma'am or sir. Although that would assume gender. This is getting more complicated than it should be, so something I can tell you with confidence is no finger snapping and no flirting, ever. And when it comes time for refreshment service, something flight attendants hate is an unprepared drink order. If you see the cart coming, please don't act like it is a total surprise when you are asked what you would like to drink. There's usually a menu in the seat back pocket with the drink options for you to reference, and most flights offer free coffee, tea, juice, soft drinks, and water. Try to have one of these in mind along with a backup option as that's always appreciated. You'll also get bonus points if you decide to throw in a please and a thank you and if you take your headphones out so you say your drink order as opposed to shouting it. The same concept applies if you are lucky enough to be on a flight that still includes a meal. Flight attendants strongly dislike fussy and unprepared passengers. Make your meal choice in advance Put your tray table down so you are ready to receive it, and please do not cause a scene if your preferred choice is no longer available. There is really nothing that the cabin crew can do if there is simply no chicken left. And you making a scene is not going to be pleasant for anyone. You are also embarrassing yourself. If you are a picky eater, consider buying something in the airport and bringing it on board to eat on your flight instead. And here is one that I have been guilty of where I genuinely thought that I was doing the flight attendant and the environment a favor, but I was wrong. This would be handing the flight attendant a cup from a drink that they had previously served you to refill it or handing them something like a reusable thermos or water bottle. Airlines usually have a rule against attendants filling up your reusable bottles directly or reusing any cups for health and safety reasons. It can be annoying for the flight crew because they have to repeat for the 10th time that, no, sorry ma'am, I need to serve you with a fresh cup. And another time that you might think you are doing the flight attendant a favor, but they would really rather if you did not, would be if you picked up and cleaned up your seatmate's garbage while they were in the washroom or while they were sleeping. You might think that you are doing the passenger seated beside you a favor by cleaning up their garbage, but maybe their next business plan was jotted down on the back of their napkin. I once heard about someone leaving their AirPods in the meal tray table while they went to the washroom, and when they came back, their meal tray was gone. Yikes. Cabin crew also need to make sure that sleeping passengers have their seatbelts fastened in the case of unexpected turbulence. It's quite awkward for them to have to wake you up, especially if they wake you up to find out that your seatbelt was buckled the whole time, but it was just hiding underneath your blanket. You can avoid this situation by dozing off with the seatbelt buckled on top of your blanket instead of underneath it. Another situation that is certain to annoy a flight attendant is when passengers grab a suitcase from the overhead bin and proceed to squat down in the aisle to get something inside. Not only does trying to take something out of a zipped suitcase in the middle of a flight completely block the aisle, but it's also a hazard in the case of an unlikely emergency. Plan ahead and pack accordingly with the assumption that anything in a zipped carry-on suitcase is not going to be accessible for the flight. It's also dangerous to be pulling out a suitcase mid-flight over your head because any little bit of turbulence and you could end up dropping that suitcase on Aunt Louise's head. Not good. And then make sure you add a pen to the list of items that you have accessible to you during the flight as well. Paperwork is less common on flights these days, but if you do need one, you'll probably annoy the flight attendant if you ask to take theirs. This next one is a big one that we have probably all experienced in our own jobs. Flight attendants get very frustrated when there is a problem on board that they are not made aware of, especially when it's a problem that could be easily solved. So if you spot an issue, like a bathroom that needs attention, 
please let them know. They'd hate to find out about a messy bathroom or other problems during the flight from bad online reviews or customer complaints when these could have easily been handled in the moment. Flight attendants are also put in a tough position that they do not enjoy being in when you ask them to make an exception. They are trained to follow rules and specific processes are in place for good reasons. When you ask for special treatment, such as getting off the plane first despite being at the back of the cabin, it's going to put them in a tricky spot. And let's be honest, you know how tightly we are packed into these planes. If you make a special request and that request is granted, it is only a matter of time before all of the passengers around you are asking for the exact same exception. One thing that all flight attendants would love for passengers to know would be that the seat back pocket is not a garbage can. There are so many opportunities for you to hand over your garbage to the cabin crew as they make their way through the plane so there is no excuse to be leaving trash behind at your seat. You are 100% making their job more difficult and a lot less pleasant. They also wouldn't mind if more passengers knew that those blankets that are provided to you on long haul flights are meant to be washed and then reused on the next flight, not taken home with you. Anyone else guilty of stealing airline property? Oops. And whether you are a passenger or part of the flight crew, definitely let us know down in the comments what annoys you most on the plane. I will also leave down in the description what personally drives me nuts for you to check out as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll hit that subscribe button to join us back here for more travel tips and hacks next week. Until then, safe flying and I'll see you soon. Bye. Ollie is also recovering from a cut on his back right now and I'm not sure how well you can see him, but he is definitely not living his best life.